Hey everybody, Jem Schofield of the C47 and another episode of Gearbox 2.0. In this episode, it's a first look at the brand spanking new 16 to 80 millimeter lens from Fujifilm, so let's get started. All right, kiddos, it's a brand new week and this is a product that I have been waiting for for a long, long time. In fact, uh, just want to point out right from the beginning that this is not a definitive in-depth review of this lens. It is in fact a first look because I've only had it in here for a couple of days and I am myself trying to figure out if this is a lens that I'm going to invest in. Now, I'm definitely invested into the Fujifilm ecosystem both for stills and for video capture. Um, I'd have to say that quite honestly, that that's not something I expected to ever happen. When I first got the XE2 range finder style camera, and I've shot with that and a lot with the XE3, I really got it for one purpose only, and that was for shooting photographs. And so as a result, I got the camera with an 18 to 55 kit lens. So when I was traveling, I had a little bit of flexibility in terms of my field of view. It's an excellent kit lens. It's an f2.8 to an f4. Drops off pretty fast in that range, but it also has optical image stabilization. So if you're hand holding for stills, it's great. Of course, it has also become, at least for me, once I got the X-T3, a lens that I do use for video production, especially when I'm shooting behind the scenes footage handheld. And I have found that I lean on this lens. I usually set it to an F4, so I have an F4 all the way through the range, but I lean on this lens for a lot of things that are video related when I'm hand holding with the camera. And then the other lenses that I use, the 35 F2, which is weather resistant, the 56 12 which I really just use for stills, um, are lenses that kind of go into the rotation and then I have the 27 millimeter pancake lens. So that's kind of what I have. In fact, I have two of these because I got another kit lens with the X-T3 and I just leave one on the X-E3 and then this is always in the kit with the X-T3. That's a lot of threes, that's a lot of E's, but you get the point. Now, what I like about this lens, of course, is as I said before, it has optical image stabilization. Um, range is pretty good, but when we look at that field of view and we think about it in terms of a workhorse lens, it is a bit limiting on the wide end at 18 millimeters. If you compare that to a full frame field of view, it's about 28 millimeters. And it's a little bit shy on the telephoto lens side of things. In fact, at 55 millimeters, it's about an equivalent of an 85 millimeter field of view. It's still a 55 millimeter lens, don't forget that uh, when you're thinking about those out of focus areas. But it is, uh, again, not a lens that has quite the reach. Now, this has been for many, many people in the Canon world, the workhorse lens. This is a 24 to 105. It's a full frame lens. Obviously, if you put it on a crop sensor camera, it's um, even less usable on the wide end. What is it, about a 36 millimeter field of view. Um, it has a lot more reach on the long end because it's a 105, so you get a little bit further reach. But it is, um, it is a lens that a lot of people use just for day in, day out production. It is also an F4 all the way through. Um, to me, the biggest limitation to this lens is on the quote unquote wide end at 24 millimeters. So 18 uh, is limiting with, uh, you know, with that focal length. Uh, 24 is even more limiting when you are shooting in lots of different environments. And let's say you want to shoot an interior and you want to have a wider shot. So that's where this comes in. In fact, that's where a bunch of lenses on the market come in. Right now we have the 17 to 55 on the C200. That's a workhorse lens. It's just wide enough on the wide end and just long enough on the long end to use and live on a camera. 
But this for me is kind of a special range, especially when you're using it on an APS-C crop sensor camera, um, super 35 millimeter equivalent size camera system as a 16 to 80 millimeter. It also has some other important ingredients that would make us consider this lens as a lens that could live on your camera for a lot of your video production, unless you are using prime lenses so that you can shoot wide open. So let's take a look at that. First of all, again, focal length. So you've got a 16 to 80 millimeters. Yes, the barrel extends, and that's to be expected, especially with mirrorless cameras, but that keeps the lens compact when it is at the 16 millimeter focal length. And the other thing to remember about this lens is the WR or weather resistance or weather, what do they call it? Yeah, they say weather resistant. So even though this barrel extends to get to and between that 16 to 80 millimeter focal length, it is a weather resistant lens. So if you match that with a weather resistant body like the X-T3, then you've got a combination that's good in a lot of different environments. Um, true to the vast majority of the Fuji lenses out there, the aperture ring is on the barrel of the lens. So you are not only changing your focal length and your focus, but you can actually change your aperture here without going into the camera system or by using a dial. There are a couple of exceptions to that. The 27 millimeter pancake is one of them. Um, look and feel, if you're used to using other Fuji lenses from everything that I've tested so far, it's got that look. It's gonna match your other Fuji lenses. You can kind of take a look sometimes at just the coating there and there's um, you can see that they're the same for all of the lenses. And of course, probably the most important thing besides the focal length range, 16 to 80, which is basically giving you a 24 to 120 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view, is the fact that this lens has optical image stabilization. So if you are using this lens in run and gun handheld situations, like you might be using the 18 to 55, it's a more versatile lens because of that wider and that longer range in terms of focal length, but it also has the OIS. Now, the difference is that on the 18 to 55, there's actually a switch to activate it. And on this particular lens, you go into the menu. You're gonna to go to the standard camera menu and you'll see IS mode. And you can go in there and you can set that to shooting only or continuous and now you have activated it. And even though you're setting that in the camera, it is actually an optical image stabilization that is within the lens. Now, if you're gonna use this for video production, my first probably buy would be a variable ND, or at least, mm, I would say a 0.9 or a 1.2, and look at me struggling to get this open. I just actually bought this, I probably, oh. There you go, you just rotate it. So having a variable ND for a camera like this is uh, a must if you're using it for video production, even if you wanna shoot it in F4, but at least three stops if you're gonna do a fixed ND. Uh, but I like the, you know, the flexibility I'm gonna get out of a variable ND filter. So just make sure you get the one that's the right thread size. This is a 72 millimeter for this. Here I have one for the 18 to 55 that I always have inside of my kit. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and take a look at our field of view here up against uh, this counter. And basically the camera is almost right at the edge of the counter and you can see that wide shot at 16 millimeters. And here's the gotcha as I'm rolling on the footage, which is very similar to the 18 to 55. As you're changing focal length, you are seeing an apparent change in the exposure of the image until it actually settles. And that was always an issue for me with the 18 to 55. It appears that we have that same issue with the 16 to 80. 
So if you're using this for video production and filmmaking applications, you absolutely 100% have to treat this like a variable prime, which means that as you are changing focal length, you are not expecting to use that footage with that change in focal length for your final picture. You're gonna let it settle into that focal length and then you're gonna use that for your footage. That makes sense, right? Um, other thing is that when you zoom all the way in and you get focus, if you're not using continuous or um, you know a single uh, autofocus mode in your camera, it does appear from what I can tell that it is par focal. I haven't found any documentation telling me it is or isn't yet. And what does par focal mean? It usually means, especially when we're shooting in video, applications that what we'll do is we'll zoom in from a particular position that we're standing in or where the camera is to our uh, furthest focal length to telephoto if that's in this case what we would be doing and then getting tack sharp focus and then as we zoom in and out from that position in and out of that focal range we are still tack sharp throughout the range so as far as i can tell that's the case it will keep focus on that point of interest um, I want to do a little bit more testing on that, but all in all, from what I can tell, for the dollar amount that they are going to be charging for this, which I believe is about $799 US, I think that if you don't have a lens like this for your Fuji camera system, meaning you don't have the 18 to 55, then it's kind of a uh, kind of a must buy in many ways because that's going to be your workhorse video lens, but you're also going to want to get at least a couple of prime lenses. I have the 56.12 because it's a very special portrait lens, and it's a lens that I am going to use for still photography. If I'm making recommendations to people who are buying prime lenses for this camera system for video applications, I would actually in most cases, recommend that people get this family of lenses here, which are all F2, if I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, I'm probably wrong, but you have, this is the 35, they make a 50 millimeter F2 of this, there's a 23 millimeter version of this, and maybe the 16 is a different aperture, um, but overall, these weather resistant lenses are exceptional, they're really, really small. Um, the only major downside for me when it comes to these is they do not have built-in optical image stabilization. And as the X-T3 does not have IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization, you have to be really careful when you use these, especially when you get to longer focal lengths so that you have steady shots. Whew, that's a lot of information, a lot of thoughts. Um, I'm still making my final decision because I do have the 18 to 55, but my gut tells me that when I'm going around and I'm shooting interviews with this particular camera system, that this 16 to 80 is what I'm gonna need. And to be able to have that 24 millimeter full frame equivalent in terms of field of view, when I'm going into smaller spaces for establishing shots, architectural things, um, you know, things that are more documentary style. I think that while I'd love this to be a 2.8 uh, and not a 4, you can't get a lens this small for a sensor of this size to be, um, well, you can't at a 2.8. It just doesn't work. Maybe it will one day, I don't know, but optics are optics and that relationship between the lens and this and all that stuff, you know, there's some things going on there that these lens manufacturers know about. So there you go. First look at the 16 to 80 lens from Fujifilm. I think it's probably gonna be a winner. You gotta watch out for that change of focal length thing, that little stepping that I'm showing you again right now. But other than that, I think it's gonna be a lens that's gonna do a lot of work for you on a camera system like this. And I'll see you guys next time on Gearbox.